Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about extracting document information using Tika. Apache Tika. I was actually having this problem at work. Uh, we got reports in two different formats. We got one Excel format and one doc format from uh, the Microsoft Word standard and Excel standard. And these two documents were having some of the information split into both documents. So we got reports where the tabular information were in the Excel document, so they could do reports and stuff on that information. And the screenshots and other um, information that was important to know what to work on was in the document. So we actually needed a format that was both of these documents put together. So either you could open them both and look at them uh, and try to figure out which row in the Excel spreadsheet were connected to which screenshot in the documentation. And this was very tedious. It was a process that took a lot of time and you had to do a context switch back and forth. So uh, I actually thought that I needed to do a solution for this. So I created a little Java program that merged these two together and created a PDF. My solution was just getting something up quick and dirty and just solve the problem as fast as I could. And I can actually do this in about uh, four hours. I had a working solution that did everything that I needed. And this is because I used three different libraries. I used Apache Tika to actually get the information out of the different document formats. Then I used uh, JSOUP to actually parse the HTML document and actually extract the information in a structured way. And I used PDF box to create a PDF to have a format that I could display this information in. But we're going to look at Apache Tika today. And if we look at Apache Tika's page online, we can see here there is a lot of document formats that is supported. It can write, they read hypertext, XML, Office, all of the Office formats, Open Document formats, iWorks, iPerf, uh, WordPerfect, portable document formats, so PDFs. Uh, electronic publications, so EPUBs, rich text format, compression and packings format, text formats, help formats, audio formats, image formats, video formats, Java files. Yeah, it can read a lot of good things. And the important thing here is that this is actually made for extracting metadata and text in order to do analytics. Uh, but I just wanted it to make a quick extraction of the important things in some of these Office documents. So if we look at this document here, uh, this is a, some kind of report. It has some lorem ipsum, it has images, a few of them, and then some text. And I wanted to extract this using Tika. And if we go over to the actual extracted material, you see here that I extracted some images and then I have something that looks pretty much like an HTML document with image tags for the different images that I extracted. So this is a very easy implementation that I can either use as is and I have a word, uh, uh, an HTML document to look at this information or I can run some kind of uh, post-processing to create some structured material and actually use that in order to create my report or whatever it, what, every, everything I want to do here. Um, so let's go into the code and see how this is actually done. Uh, so first off, I want to look at my main and this is very small. I just have something that parses the documentation 
and then print it out. And I also have this work directory that I delete every time that I work with it. Uh, and this is for storing the images. Um, but this work directory can be anything and you can use the temp directory and create a new directory every time if you like. So let's look at the parse uh, documentation here. So first I have this basic handler uh, factory and this is actually set up to be a handler type of XML and it can write any length of document. So here you can actually say how much the write limit should be. Then I have this auto detect parser. So I can actually say I want to parse this specific document, but I can also say I don't really know what kind of document it is. It is. So figure that out and then extract the information for me. Then I need to create a content handler. And this is uh, from the first here. I just get the content handler from my basic content handler that I set up earlier. I set up an object to extract the metadata from the uh, file, but I will not use the metadata, but I just send this in so I have somewhere to store the metadata because it will parse that anyway. Then I need to create a Tika instance, and this is just to get this detector, and the detector is used inside of the file embedded document extractor. So this is the class that it will actually extract all the images for me. So I set that to my parse context. So this is the parse context and I set an embedded document extractor and this is my own document extractor. Uh, so we will look at that later. But, th but this is to extract the images of a Tika document and it requires this detector in order to detect what kind of things it actually finds as embedded things in this document. And I also need to set the parser to my context. So I need to set two uh, parameters to this context. And if I extract, for instance, a document like an Excel spreadsheet, I might not need this document extractor because maybe there isn't any images there. So this is just if you need to extract images and other information that is embedded into the document. And then I just say which file I want to work with. I create an input stream of that file and I run the parser, sending in the stream, the handler that I set up, up earlier, the metadata uh, doc, uh, object to store the metadata and the context. What I will get back is this handler string. So it's a string with this HTML document that I have extracted. So this is the only piece of code required to extract documents, uh, document information and metadata from a lot of different documents. Of course, this library is imported and if we look at my POM file here, the only thing that I import is the Apache Tika, Tika core, and the Apache Tika, Tika parses. So I get all the parses and the core. And this will end up making <laughs> something. Uh, it's a lot of different uh, uh, libraries. So I think we will get the 50, 60 megabytes of uh, stuff downloaded here but it's a very competent library. So it, of course it takes, play, uh, takes a lot of space. If we go into this document here, uh, this is the file embedded document extractor uh, that I talked about earlier. And in order to do this, you need to implement two functions. They, you need to implement should parse embedded or parse Im and parse embedded. The other things here are thing helper functions that these functions used. So you have the copy function. It's very self-explanatory. It copies files. We have the extension, which take this content type, uh, this meta type, and it will use the configuration object. Uh, look at the MIME repository. So this is a repository of all the MIME types that could occur. It looks for a name in there from the content type and that it can actually extract the extension 
and this extension is then returned here if it is, isn't null. If it's null, then I will return bin as a binary format. So that's a very little helper function. Another little helper function here is to create the output file. It's also very simple. It gets the extension and then checks if the name that it has suggested to extract the image name, for instance, uh, ends with the uh, or has dots in it. And if it's uh, the content type is not null, then we will add the extension to it. Uh, and if the name has any null characters, we will replace those with spaces. And we will normalize that name and then we will create an output file with that normalized name in my out extract dir, this work dir. So this is also a very simple function to handle those things. Uh, as I said earlier, I will send in the detector here. So we, I will have that detector. I have this extraction there with its work, which is work. And uh, I have this ticker config, which is just the default config. And that's to um, extract this uh, large uh, repository of uh, MIME types. The should it parse embedded is just true. <laughs> so it doesn't do any check on the metadata if it should ex extract it. It extracts all files. And then we have this parse embedded. It will take an input stream and uh, we will see if it's supported. And then we will create a ticker input stream from that. We will uh, look with the detector which uh, content type this is. And when we get that, we will get the resource name from the metadata. So this is the name of the file that we want to create. And then we will create this output file from get my output file. But if the name is not known, we will actually just create a file with a counter that we count up. So it starts on zero and then you get one, two, three, four. So file zero, file one, file two and so on. Usually you get the resource name from the document, so you can use that. And now we have our output file. We will look at the parent and see that that, that exists. Otherwise, we will create that, doc that directory so we have somewhere to write our file. And then we say that we start extracting it. We set up this file output stream for the file. We create, we check that this input stream is a ticker input stream. And that's what we created up here. Um, so it was supported by that point. And then we will uh, change it over to a ticker input stream. We will open the container and see that that doesn't fail. The get open container should be a type of the um, directory entry type. And then we will set up this POIF uh, <laughs> file system. So this is somewhere we want to write it and then we just do a copy of this file over to to disk and then we will write it to the os so this is what we use in order to first off copy it over to a temporary place and then we will write it down on disk if this doesn't work we will just copy <laughs> using utils uh, the input stream directly to disk uh, and the same goes if it's not a tick input stream. Most of the code here I have copied from the CLI um, Java implementation of Tika. So it's what's used when you run Tika from the command line uh, and so you will have the same experience there. If you are just running Tika, you can actually do all the extraction and you could get HTML files just by using that command. So what I've shown you today is more uh, tailored to if you want to write your own little script, your own little application in order to extract information, make it into some format that you can do decisions on and create another output. So if you want to extend Tika with your own functionality, this is the way to do it. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. 
maybe you go out and try uh, writing something with TK yourself or you get inspired uh, by this video. If so, please leave a comment down in the comment section below and tell me what you came up with. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.